Okay, now we're inside the box in Ableton Live. What I have here is three tracks set up. Ignore the first and the third. Those are just used for this recording. Um, really, the middle one is you want. It's a MIDI track. Um, another thing to look at is preferences. In preferences in the MIDI sync tab, the MIDI, uh, the macro control fast track pro, because that's what I'm using to transfer the MIDI signals to the computer. Uh, so input, we need to turn on remote. Um, that'll get signals coming in. If we look up in the corner here, as I hit something, see the yellow light come on? Translate it into something. Um, then the next thing is you need to associate an instrument to the MIDI track. So all I did um, is I spun down instruments, drum rack, kit, and I went down to kit, big and punchy stick. All I did was just drag that over to here. That placed this down here. So now as I mouse over, if I click the kick, we get a kick, floor tom. We're getting sounds. Now the trick is um, we need to somehow map the um, pads on the drum to get into the right spot and the right um, to trigger the right sound in uh, session drums. Up here in the right hand corner there is a MIDI map. So you hit that. What it does is anything that's purple you can highlight it. So say I'm going to do highlight that. Um, you hit, hit it once on what you want to map and then second I'm going to hit pad 9. So now mappings is uh, this note G sharp 3 which is pad 9 is to pad tuning so now if I turn off the MIDI map and watch the snare tuning right now it's at 64 and as I hit 9 it'll go off on off on nothing in between just off on so that will work great if you want to trigger a, a loop to start you can use this for it but it I can't in here Let's go in and just delete that. Um, I can't highlight these notes. They're not purple. And this is what I want. So if somebody knows how to do that, please let me know. Let's turn that off. So what Ableton's normally set up as is you got a grid of four by four triggers. And there's a little box here, and you have this whole range of MIDI notes. So if I scroll up, we can get to different places. And it maps whatever the 16 are here to you know, whatever we have highlighted. Um, however, the Roland SPDS is not currently mapped to that. So if I hit number nine, it's coming across as a G sharp. And if we look on the side here, you see the little yellow note by the cursor? That's the wrong spot. We want it to be, or you know, in here somewhere. Um, so I can scroll up and then you can see it firing, but it's not actually making anything happen. So what we got to do now is in, we scroll all the way down to MIDI effects. And in MIDI effects tools, there's this drum map. Drag that in, put it in front of the kit. I'm actually going to delete what's there. We're going to set up some brand new ones. And we can associate keys and then incoming key, and then we can do something with it. So key nine. Over in here, see how it's red? That's what note's coming in. It's a G-sharp 3. So if I want to change the G-sharp 3, I just need to put an effect on it. And we are going to put a pitch. So drag pitch down into the MIDI effects area here. That puts in a new chain. All right, And this is the range. So right now it says any MIDI note, change the pitch. But we want the range to be G sharp three, right? So now a range of one note, G sharp three, and we're gonna change the pitch. If I drag this over, and I can click and highlight that. Now I can go up and down with my arrows. So now negative five, negative six, negative seven. I can keep going, and as I hit, I'm gonna hit down. Now it's a cowbell, down again. Now it's a splash. Keep going down. You can see over here where it starts moving, the more down I hit, down again. So there it's the B1, down again. It should be hi-hat open. Low tom. Keep going down. 
I actually want it to be hi-hat closed. So in this case, it's negative 26 to get it to be the right spot. Now, the other thing is um, we can move these things around in here, you know, just by dragging. Um, so first I tried it where I set all these up exactly how this particular set had it, but then that started to make less sense to me because I loaded in another um, drum kit and it had mapped different places for different sounds. So imagine this nine grid here as the nine triggers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's map those. So we got the first one mapped, right? If I drag this back over, um, instead of chain, let's rename that and we'll call this pad nine, because that's what we just did. So let's drag in another pitch and we'll rename it and we'll call this one pad eight. So if I hit pad eight, it's coming in as a G3. So let's trigger G3, and with G3, then we want to change the pitches. Keep coming down. It's a high hat. Now it's, it's floor tom, meaning it's right next to 9. 9, 8, 9, 8, right? But I don't want that to be the floor tom. I want that to be the hi-hat open. So I can just switch those two. And now I have... We can go through the rest of this, map out all the other pads to be these spots. When you're all done with that, hit this little save button on the drum map. That'll make a new preset. Now I'm going to hit the little hot swap because I have one that's already saved. I'll put it in here. And we're going to hot swap it with this. So now you can see the one that I set up before where I went through all nine and I also put in the KD-8. Um, the floor, the kick pedal, and then they map to the nine pads here of one, two, three. And the floor, which right now is mapped to nothing. So the next trick is to move these around. So I want the kick over here, and if I hit the kick, right? Now the other trick here is a hot swap. You can hit save once you get it all set. And I save some up here. So here's big and punchy. I'll just hot swap it. Um, drum map and then the big and punchy. We got the nine pads and the kick. So now when I play over here. Now it's all mapped correctly. Now the other nice thing is about setting it up this way. If you hot swap, then you can make your own other kits, so maybe I want it to use the 808 instead. And everything's real nice and lined up with the SBS. Now say I want, instead of the clap, I want a snare. Just swap those two and start playing. Put the clap back. And you're set. And that's how you use the Roland SPDS as MIDI drum input triggers for Ableton Live and Session Drums.